guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori, and I have a little bit of a walkthrough of keepsakes. That is a cross-stitching store that I'm sure we've all heard of. If you've heard of StitchCon, you know, they put on, um, Keepsakes puts on StitchCon, the two weekends. This is my walkthrough. I wanted to talk you to you a little bit about the store, the people, what I saw, what I did, and I'll give you something to look at while we're chit-chatting. So I went down on my day off, I think I was on vacation, it was a Friday, and it ended up being a really busy day in the store, which is always lovely to see, but I was kind of dodging people. I think there was like 15 people in the store that day when I got there that had come over from a, a retreat in Indiana. So it was really kind of interesting I completely enjoyed myself just walked around the staff are so nice Barbara was so welcoming to me um, it was great everybody was so willing to help and I will say if you're in the area and you want to touch and feel and you want to see what you're purchasing and not maybe order online it's always nice to have a local store available to you to do that um, this store is about two hours from me so I wouldn't I would like to say that it's my local stitchy store, but it's it would not technically be. I do have a store here in Columbus as well, um, but I really enjoy going down to Cincinnati when I get the opportunity, as you can see. I mean, it is just chock full of all the stitchy goodness that you can imagine. Um, in that little baggie I was showing you, they had some charms, like the 2023 charms, and they were selling them like two at a time. And um, we just left the front room. Now we're in the second room where you enter the building. Um, and this is an old house that they have turned every room into a different room. So they all seem to have some type of a theme. I believe this room here is, if I had to guess, I would say it's like your newer patterns, maybe from market. Um, upstairs, when we get up there, those rooms definitely have a theme. But down here, I noticed a lot of newer patterns. There's Tiny Town over there. I would have picked it up, but I already had one. I will have another floss tube coming out shortly um, that you will see what I purchased while I was down here. Um, I just enjoy walking around and looking at all the stitches on the walls. Um, a lot of them, like at most stores, are what they're selling currently although they don't have everything stitched up, but they had a good representation. And I love that they had like designers kind of grouped together and then there was just floss hanging on the wall or some fabric just show you, you know, what could go with it. There's a lot of representation of their cat. So if I'm correct with my story, 310 was found outside as a kitten and they adopted her and she's all black so they named her after the dmc color for number for black so her name is 310. i didn't get to see her i have not been able to see her when i go down i think they said she's a little nervous around people so she only comes out if it's super quiet in the shop so this room here that i'm showing you now also is where they have stitching nights so people or days people come in and they can just sit around and stitch and visit. And I know they have different groups, different days of the week. Um, that is the front door, so I'm kind of back in that front room just to show you what I miss. Like I said, I was kind of dodging people, and, you know, you have to show what you can show while I was trying to raise my camera sometimes to get over people's heads that didn't necessarily want to be filmed. Um, that's the front porch on the other side. So this is the wall that would go out the front door and they just have little patterns tucked in all around. Now, if you're looking for something specific, I absolutely know that if you ask them for a specific pattern, they will know specifically where it's at. They'll be able to help you get the flosses and the fabric and whatever size. I even saw them doing some calculations for folks who had a specific pattern and they didn't know how much fabric to purchase. So I'm in the busy, busy while I was in there, cutting and surgeon, cutting and surgeon, which was great to see. 
This is uh, still that front room downstairs. And then we're going to get ready here shortly, and we're going to head upstairs in this house, which the second floor is equally as full of goodies as the first floor. Now, um, I also was down here for another reason. I am doing a secret project. I haven't really announced it yet, but I have created a product, and I'm waiting on... Uh, pricing from the people I need to purchase the item from and I was down here to show a mock-up of what it is in hopes that they will sell it and Barbara has said that she will carry it in her shop I just need to get everything finalized it'll also be sold through evertote.ca and I believe the Colorado cross stitcher said that she would be interested I haven't been able to get them pricing yet so that's what we're waiting on um, this is the the um, floss room. So this room of the house, which I'm assuming would have been a bedroom, is all floss of every variety, every style. There was silk, there was krynic, there was sulky, um, cotton, obviously, hand dyed, DMC, over dyed. They had a little sampling of all the different cross stitch and embroidery type flosses and string and yarns that you could need. I think I even saw some wool back there for like the cruel type situation, but they had it all sectioned off by type and then by dyer. So they had like DMC and then on the sulky wall, it was all sulkies and all the silks. And then we'll, I'll turn around here in a second and you will see where all the Krynic braids were, which I probably should have visited because I do need some uh, Krynic. And those things that you're seeing the floss hanging on, they're on hinges and they're like doors and you just move, open them and shut them. And then you can get to all of the different floss straight ahead. That is all their Krynic braids. And then to the left in there was needles of all varieties. I didn't need any, or I would have picked some of those up. I have to have a sip of my coffee. I didn't get to show it to you, but I have coffee because well duh now I am let me see what we're looking at here oh yep and they have patterns up here as well I mean there's just patterns everywhere and little look floss rings and floss cards really I mean they have it all you just have to either know what you're looking for I would say make a list or you let the store tell you what you're looking for Mr. Wellington here is trying to get on top of my computer. He's not happy that I'm not talking to him, that I'm talking to you. Um, here's some more patterns that have been stitched up. Um, I'm standing there trying to get over somebody's head. I will be moving here shortly. Yep, so down here, there's the patterns. These I love those little tiny patterns. Some FOSS cards. I mean, just variety is the spice of life there's the sulky wall so they have sulky kits that are in different packs and then they have color families and I believe they had some individual colors as well but mostly it was well there's those big containers are full sulky kits and then they had a couple individual spools out but mostly they came in bundles which I think is pretty nice all the different and it shows you up there your needle point silks and all of that I mean they do carry a little bit of everything which is lovely and oh look at those red now we're moving here into I believe a different room this might be the back bedroom um, and this room was just covered in finished cross stitch and then from the waist up and then below again all your patterns upstairs doesn't have as many notions as downstairs besides your needles and floss upstairs is mostly finished product finished cross stitches and um, of all varieties and then the patterns that you know coordinate with them I do believe this was the back bedroom and then there is all of the um, Americana type stitching. It was close to the 4th of July when I was down there. So there was a lot of 
Fourth uh, of July stitches, a lot of Americana situation. In this corner here, they have all of your military different things represented. Tomatoes, like all the tomatoes. I need a bread bowl full of tomatoes. I'm not going to lie. So anyway, I was visiting and walking around and picking out patterns for myself and just listening to the ladies at the retreat being super jealous that I was not at a retreat but you know I have mine in October and um, there's some more Americana back there on the wall I like it again that they have things separated by type by season by holiday even in some situations by designer you know maybe all of in some areas they had all of the um more modern type stitches together and then in other areas they had samplers and I just the hours and hours that have been consumed with creating all of these cross stitches is just amazing to me okay so then we're going into the next room oh no this is the same room but this is in the closet and then they have all these littles in the closet, which is super cute. So they've taken all the doors off, um, all the rooms and the closets, and utilized every inch of space in this little tiny house. And it is a little tiny house. I asked if they had moved closer to Columbus, but she said that they could, but her husband probably wouldn't like it. And I'm like, well, I mean, I get it, but think of somebody else like me. <laughs> I'm just joking around. Um, oh, that one was so cute. Little mouse. I didn't buy it. I think I bought like four or five patterns, if I'm remembering correctly. And I think at this point I'm chit-chatting with somebody okay that is at the top of the stairs going down so even on the stairwell it's wall after wall after wall of finished cross stitches but seeing them done is just amazing and it gives you a whole different perspective because we all know that pictures don't always tell the story Okay, now I'm upstairs, and is this the Christmas, this might be the Christmas room. I say Christmas room, but I think it's a holiday room, so there's like Christmas and Halloween and fall. Yeah, there's the Halloween and fall, and the back room there to your left, I had just come out of that room. And I am up front here, and this is, oh, all of the Christmas and Christmas cats let me tell you there's a lot of black cats happening and snowmen so this room here is seasonal so you're going to find in this specific bedroom a lot or most of the seasonal items um, like i said christmas halloween thanksgiving there was a lot in here and it was so fun i did definitely buy a halloween stitch i know that for sure and I got a B to do, but I have that'll be some time from now that I can get to the B. On this trip, I also is when I went to the Dollar Tree, that big Dollar Tree. I've already posted that video, but this is the trip I did both of them out at the same time. I just went and got some massive amount of videoing taken in order to. Um, show you oh and they have magazines i have that one i'm actually on the hunt for the just cross stitch fall or the halloween edition i saw that somebody had it in stock um i think it's my local stitchy store here in columbus but i keep stopping at the barnes and noble by my house and they don't have the new one in yet so i'm thinking it goes to the shops and the people first and then maybe to like the bookstores i'm not really I'm not really sure I'll have to find out but I just keep stopping in and checking and they don't have it yet I really just want to decorate my house for Christmas at this point after revisiting all of this um, 
these these holiday stitches and I do need to start my Christmas ornament for July because I have not done that yet so that'll be something I can potentially work on this evening for sure um, I think we're into the other bedroom a little bit or it could be in the same room just so many walls so oh look at that little rolled pillow that would be a really fun finish a lot of drums a lot of framed art obviously but there was a lot of drums and little pillows Ooh. sorry I was turning around trying not to catch trying not to catch somebody who preferred not to be on the video <gasps> look at that like hanging I got a lot of good ideas for finishes for different things. I just need to stitch them up. All right, now we're downstairs in the back room, which what I would assume would be the kitchen of the house or was at some point. This is all of the fabric and this is how they store it in totes. And it is separated by count, color, designer, um, weave, you know, is it an even weave? Is it a linen? Is it an Ada? So they have it all pretty sorted out in these totes. And you can just go and grab a tote and pull. Um, the bags that you saw on the counter, they were still coming back from StitchCon when I was down there. So they, they were putting everything away. But you just go in the room and you're like, oh, I need a 32 count. Here is 32 count linen. This is what I need. So then once you pick out your fabric, you pull it out and it's all on big pieces. You take it over, they measure, they cut it and they serge it right then and there for you. Um, yes, yeah, so you can even pick out what part of the fabric that you want and they're able to do that. So I hope you enjoyed my walkthrough of the keepsakes down in Cincinnati and you like and subscribe and I will talk with you later. Bye.